LDBC. This is your boy, Coach Sheldon Harrison. You're live, live, live on the Coach Sheldon Harrison Combat Sports Show Live. And, boy, I, I got a special guest on the Coach's Corner. God, dog. This this going to be straight fire, y'all, okay? Y'all better get something to drink. Uh, you know, just go sit down somewhere. And because uh, me and this brother, we don't give a damn about your feelings. And that's just the way that is. What's up? I got brother Santee Walden on the phone. What's going on, man? What's going on, family? <laughs> Same old shit, man. Just a different goddamn toilet. <laughs> oh. and, and, I tell you, and, and I tell you what, man. You know, you got these butthurt Triple G fans out here. And they don't want to accept the fact that Triple G is injured due to an assault. And a true ass whooping from Daniel Jacobs that was already determined before the fight started. Let alone, when you look at the overall characteristics of this fight through 12 rounds, he was landing fatal combinations that beat the dog shit off of this guy. And, and must I add more, okay? Look, they hype this man up. When I, what I mean by they, I mean HBO, I mean Tom Lawful, I mean Abel Sanchez. They hype this man up in order to be this sensational piece that cannot be beaten, cannot be broken, can, cannot be dealt with on any type of structure because he is completely a machine and a monster that will destroy each and every piece in front of him. But now he is left without his confidence. And he doesn't even feel like he won his last fall, his last fight, coach. Yeah, man. I mean, you know what, man? I've been saying this for years and years on here. And yeah, I'm not the biggest Triple G fan. Hell, I'm not a fan of Triple G. I can really care. I, I, you know what? I'm not a fan. Let's just put it out there. I'm not a fan of the man. And some of you eat feminine popcorn, pop tart, farts, booty breath, booger breath, butt boys. I know what you guys are gonna do. You're gonna bring your ass to the comment section. And I'm gonna tell you something. As soon as you do, I'm gonna tear into you. I'm gonna rip your heart out your chest. That's what I'm gonna do because I said this man, when this man fought somebody, you know, this man fought a credible opponent that, that fights back. Not a Dominic Wade punching bag, okay? Not a damn Dominic Wade punching bag. Not a Rubio, not a Gay Brazado, uh, you know, uh, just a, a, a ready-made ass-whooped machine. Okay, we're not talking about that. Okay, see, we're talking about a Danny Jacobs that went in there, put that leather on that body, crushed them ribs, and now this boy running around here talking about now he hurt. Now he don't even have the confidence to go beat up a Billy Joe Saunders, and that's right, Billy Joe Saunders. He's still a hoe. Okay, he's still a hoe because now we know now that he knew that Golovkin was hurt, and he knew that the fight would never happen anyway. So now he's sitting here running his damn mouth, talking about, I'll do, I'd fight Golovkin like this. I'll fight, man, you know what, Billy Ho? You will never be Billy Joe Saunders again, okay? And all you Golovkin fans, we tried to tell y'all. We tried to set back. We told y'all that this man's resume sucked. We told you that this man was going to be in for a war with Danny Jacobs. We told y'all this. And now y'all are eating the crow of your words, my brother. chime in on coaches, I will say that it's not completely Billy Joe's fault. As they said in a report, Billy Joe received uh, a contract before the Daniel Jacobs fight. This is the hype machine all over again because they feel like Daniel Jacobs was so much of a pushover opponent with the glass chin that they would smash him, step in position, destroy him in order to set up the unification of this battle. Now, as hardcore boxing fans, we deserve an undisputed champion because we have not seen one in so long. Now, for Billy Joe, do I feel like he has the confidence to whatever? I don't know. He had the confidence to sign the contracts. Can he beat Triple G? Hell fucking no. Triple G will step on him like a cockroach. The first punch that Triple G throws to the gut of Billy Joe, he will curl up like a cheese doodle, and he will let go of the belt like it has cooties. <laughs> this is what I'll say. <laughs> on my whole demeanor as far as things, as I go ahead and touch on this. They served way too much medicine to the overall ego and confidence of Triple G before he deserved it against a credible opponent. When you are in the ring, 
Shout out to Boxing Beats and Rounds. I'm going to say it one more time. When you are in the ring against cab drivers, I'm paraphrasing, against cab drivers, tomato cans, the uh, store manager from uh, uh, goddamn Sam's or, or BJ's <laughs> or what have you, and you're in the ring against these guys, you're going to look golden. You will look like the baddest motherfucking thing since potato bread. Right. But when you actually have to step in a ring against a credible opponent and get the job done, here it comes a person picking apart everything that you are not good at. So once he starts to beat the dog shit off of you, you can't cry and complain and say, hey, I'm 35. So you can't teach an uh, old dog new tricks. You can't bring a, uh, uh, an, an old dog to the water. You can, you can bring him to the water, but you can't make him drink. You can't say all this shit because at this point, they have pushed you so far up the ladder. You're supposed to know this and understand the skill that you have and what you lack. So at this point, who do I blame? I blame the fanboys, I blame the co promotional company, I blame HBO, and all these other pieces of shit that have stood in front of you and told you that he is A1, when in all reality, he is a wet, cold can of spam. Coach, take it from here. Man, you know what? <laughs> Boy, that, 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 that was music to my ears. I mean, that, that, that was music to my ears. To hear all of this, man. You know what? I, I'm excited about this video. I can't take it. I can't take it. Because I'm going to tell you, man, we said that, you know, okay, Triple G got a good jab. But once you get past his jab, okay, and when you got a guy like Daniel Jacobs who can take some of that away from you, okay, now what do you have? You just got a guy that can cut the ring off but with no offense, okay? When you got a guy like Daniel Jacobs who took away a lot of weapons that Triple G uses, okay, he took away that overhand right. You know that right hand that he liked to throw? It's like a hook right hand, and he kind of throws it from an awkward angle. Daniel Jacobs took that away, okay? Daniel Jacobs exposed the fact that this dude don't move his head. But this is something that we all knew, okay? See, let me tell you what happened. Abel Sanchez. Abel Sanchez with his uh, inner tube, tire-ass belly. What he did was he, he ain't teach Golovkin nothing new. He ain't teach him nothing as long as Golovkin win, and that's okay. See, he didn't go in to try to teach the guy how to slip these punches, okay? He didn't go in and give Golovkin a plan A and a plan B. Triple G only got a plan A. And when you take away his plan A, there is no plan G. And Abel Sanchez, I blame him too because, really, man, he just was just being fat and lazy, man. And, you know, just riding off the success that he had. Oh, yeah, he's winning, he's winning. So what more does he need to do? See, that's the mentality that he had. Okay, then you got that, that, that pelican-nosed bastard, Tom Loeffler, okay, who, you know, for years done ruined the guy's career. Could do, Think about how big a star Triple G would be if he was with Al Heyman. I mean, just really think. Even, even if he was with Eddie Hearn, man, this guy would have been getting in fights, okay? But no. No, no, no. You got Tom Loeffler. Every time this man talk, that damn nose on his face get big like a damn bus part. He talk and this man lie. The man can't tell the truth. The man always talking about how people ducking Golovkin. But then, you know, he got lore problems. He don't want that work, okay? Now he got Jacob problems. He don't want that work again. You had the De uh, DeGale problems. You got Gilberto Ramirez problems. I mean, all the problems that this guy has... But you got Tom Loeffler. See, they should have been putting this guy in the ring early on and get this guy tested. Now you wait till the guy's damn near 35 to give him, really, his first test. And now we see what happens. Thank you, Tom Loeffler, with your big-ass nose. All right, go ahead, man. What's up? Agree with every point that you test on. Absolutely. <laughs> and and, and the, the solid cold crusher thing since we're touching on everything as far as with this guy. Tom Loeffler feels like, as a promoter, which he's a complete idiot, okay, garbage to the sense of what a promoter is supposed to be. He feels like there's so much uh, significance which in a fight with Canelo that it would go down and he would make so much money. But what he fails to realize is Triple G stock has dropped tremendously with this Daniel Jacobs fight because on a basis of 50-50 or 60-40 or whatever you want to look at it as, 
So many people feel like Daniel Jacobs has won. So this is another thing that's lopsided in this man's career. Okay? And, and, and not only that, looking at the, the, the 60-40 or 50-50 deal within Triple G. Okay? Now, they're on the coward road of waiting until September. Except, you know, other than waiting until June with the contract that was handled by Daniel, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Billy Joe Saunders to take before the fight was Daniel Jacobs in order to set up something for him to be an undisputed champion. You know, he can't help this. This is nothing he can do about this. And even with the months given based on an injury, we don't know the specifics of what the injury is because he's in hiding and his camp is not mentioning anything, even though they'll come out here to address something about what Cal Brooks said. But these guys here in particular may not even make the Canelo date of September based on their injury from this ass whooping. You don't take a fighter that is good and place him as great before he has the opportunity to be great. I don't beat on the mail worker or the cab driver and say, look, I am the greatest of all time. 